Hi there and welcome to this exercise. So what I'm going to show you today is how to practice drawing simplified forms. So this is a response to my earlier video in which I talked about using simplified forms to construct the world. So we're talking about forms like uh, cubes, cylinders, cones, spheres, these sorts of things. And these can be thought of as like the building blocks um, that are used in the world that we see around us, okay? Now, if we can get the hang of drawing them, it's gonna make it a lot easier to draw more complex forms. They can sort of act like a, a bit like an armature. So if you know what an armature is, it's um, like when a sculptor makes a head, for example, they construct a very simplified shape of a head, maybe out of um, tissue paper or something like that, or wire and then they build the more complex form of the head on top of that armature. So you can do the same with drawing. You can use these simplified forms to create a sort of a rough sort of structure of the world and then do a much more detailed contour drawing on over the top. Learning to draw these simplified forms though can be quite challenging. In my earlier video, I talked about how you have to sort of work with perspective and understand a bit about three-dimensional space. Okay, so I would refer you to that video. There's some, uh, some good suggestions there, but what I'm gonna show you today is just how to practice this at home. So what I suggest is setting up, first of all, setting up things like this, books. Uh, books, boxes, cube-like shapes. Um, just put them on a table and we're gonna practice them in a variety of um, arrangements. So it's good to practice them at different eye levels, for example, and then you can sort of um, get to understand their perspective. So I'm gonna go through these and uh, I'll, sort of I'll do this one um, slowed down and make a few points. And then I'll do another one sort of speed it up for you. Okay, so the first point I want to make is we talked about um, drawing straight lines. So we're not interested in the patterns or the writing on the books or any of the details like that. We're just really trying to get these straight diagonal lines in the correct arrangement to give the sense of the books sitting on a table. Okay, so when you're drawing straight lines, as a recap, um, there's a straight line. Okay, what you want to do is perhaps uh, mark a dot at one end and a dot at another end, okay? And then you can ghost the line by just going back and forward. And then when you feel happy, you could just make a straight line like that. Now, it doesn't matter too much if it overlaps. Um, the main thing is, is to try and use your whole arm, not your hand, and that allows you to, if I just do a few like that, to start to draw straighter lines, okay? That's quite satisfying once you get the hang of it. Obviously, the quicker you go, the less control you have. So you need to strike that balance. Okay, so I've got that first line. Now, if you look at it, you can see it's probably not um, quite straight enough. So I'm just going to just draw that again. So one, two ghosting great okay now um, when we talked about triangulation the other week we were looking at how so if I draw this next dot down here okay. so I'm looking when I place that dot I'm looking at the dot above so I'm trying to get a sense of that shape I'm also trying to get a sense of how it relates to that shape and um, that other dot up here Okay, so you're practicing all these skills simultaneously. Now, let's draw. Now, when I talked about perspective, I was saying that we know that this diagonal and this line need to converge, so they need to get closer. So it can't be parallel, it has to be something like that. Okay, now I say don't expect it to, you won't get it first time, but you can practice it. So I'm going to speed up now and uh, try and get the get them all done and we'll see, see what that looks like.
Okay, so there we go. So this is exactly the sort of thing that I want you to try and do. Now, my recommendation is, I say, not to get bogged down in detail. Just concentrate on the bare bones, um, these diagonals, and see if you can get them. You see, I was, I was having to correct quite a bit. Um, now, as an optional extra, you can then go on and you can just have a look at, you know, maybe even use a ruler just to see whether you feel that you've got these lines converging. So we take all the diagonals of this uh, box here. OK, that looks about right. They feel like they're all going to the same vanishing point. Now, if I do the same with this um, book here, that goes up there. Yeah, converging, but maybe not at the same rate. So if we look at this, the actual... OK, maybe the rate of convergence there was a bit sort of steeper than I, I've done it there. Um, here, so with this book, I was just conscious of this line, OK? So again, using this negative space there to get that angle, OK? So that angle. Comes up like so. And there's an angle there. So these books, they're at different heights and different rotations. That means um, although they are still, the vanishing points are still on the same uh, eye level, the vanishing points will actually be in different places, um, which can be a bit confusing. But the main thing here for you, I think, is just to focus on the idea that they are converging lines. OK, so those are... So it's not too bad, OK? Um, so I'll do another one for you. Again, speed it up and uh, just see how we get on with that, OK? Okay, so there's another one. So as you can see, uh, sort of both simple and challenging. You can see I was making corrections here. When it came to the corner of the book here, um, when I came to put this book underneath, I realised that um, the corner of this book comes down more. OK, which might mean that that was either a slightly steeper angle or I just hadn't made enough of that. Um, so these are the sorts of things. This is where the previous exercise with the matchsticks comes in useful, because, again, all of these points are relating to all the other points, these sort of corner points. And they all it all helps if you can start to see how do, how do they all relate to each other. So it's not like um, these simple forms, um, certainly at this stage, it's not like we're just um, inventing things. We are trying to use observation. But ultimately, what we're after is the idea is we can actually start to invent these forms um, with a bit more accuracy. But in particular, this ability to get the, you know, get those all going in the right direction, that's that sort of the more you draw it from life, the more it will come to you when you're actually out there sketching on the spot. It's trying to get these diagonals in the right relationship, OK? And uh, as I say, it does take a bit of practice. So that's the first exercise. Get some books, stack them up, uh, books, cubes, blocks, and uh, just try and do this, uh, do a few of these, OK? So now we'll move on to something else.
Okay, so same exercise, um, just but we're going to practice our cylinders and our ellipses. Okay, um, so you saw in my previous video, I was saying that um, ellipses can be thought of ellipses can be thought of as having uh, dimensions like this. You can think of them as in in a box if that helps or you can simply try to practice drawing them freehand like so, okay? And remember, as they go deeper, they become more circular, okay? And that will give you the, the feeling that you're after. Yeah, so again, looking at the gaps between the objects, uh, but yeah, just try to set up a few simple shapes and then try and draw them as accurately as possible. So let's uh, so this one's got a sort of fairly thin ellipse because it's quite high. Okay, these forms it's quite nice to have a center line. Um, that tends to make it easier to get the symmetry these are some of the hardest forms to draw i think um i often say when you're drawing a vase of flowers actually the vase will probably give you more problems than the flowers So you can see what I'm doing is I'm starting loose and then gradually becoming a bit more definite as it goes on. Okay, so that ellipse just looks like it could be a bit deeper at the top there. Okay, then let's use what we're talking about with negative spaces. So we draw a line over here um, that locates it's the gap. Again, just trying to get symmetry there. Now there's a little bit of um, perspective as if we're looking down on this. So that's just useful to be aware of. So, so for the moment, I'm just trying to get those um, little marks in just to suggest um, the dimensions of the cylinder before being too, before getting it all blocked in more exactly. Okay, then we've got one here. So we're looking, does this come, this comes a bit past the middle, this bottle here, so it's like so. And then it comes quite high. If you look at the bottom of the cup though, the ellipse doesn't come as deep as that, so maybe something like that. Look at, looking at that negative space, what's that gap like between those two? So this cup comes down like so. This is a very deep ellipse because we're really looking down on it. Remember the hockey stick idea. So just get that ellipse to just cut up around there. So 
So try to be relaxed about it. With these construction drawings, uh, you know, you're probably going to make errors. Um, but you can correct them. So these are like working drawings. So um, you're trying to make corrections as you go. Like I said about Alison's drawing last. I liked it when, when you can see the corrections. Um, it tends to make for an interesting drawing. Like that. Now we can draw the handle. Again, negative space there. The gap between the handle, if we can get that. Might help. Okay, and then the ellipse at the top there. So this gives you the structure. So this is a bit like what I mean about how you, the armature idea is once you have that, so drawing the this shape, uh, the handle, this is more like drawing something on top of the armature. The hard work is in getting the initial um, shapes in place. So let's see something like that. Now there is a suggested curve there as well. So I talked about wrapping lines. So even if you can't see lines, um, can be useful just to sort of suggest them. Um, you look for them. They help to explain the form that you're looking at. So we don't want to get too much into detail. So that would be a sort of study. So let's have a quick look at it. Um, so things you want to try to be particularly aware of is are these forms symmetrical? Um, and are the ellipses in the right relationship, i.e. they're thinner and then they're getting deeper as they go down, okay? And um, these, I say, these are unforgiving subjects um, in that when they're wrong, oh, when they're wrong, you will tend to know about it. It would just look wrong, okay? That's not too bad. Um, that's maybe a bit pointy there. <laughs> okay, so cylindrical forms. And then the idea is, is that if you practice these enough, when you come to need to draw them in nature, you can just get a sense of them. But it's not that you're drawing a flat shape, you're actually visualizing these things as sort of three-dimensional shapes. So like here, you know, it comes towards you. Okay. It's all the, so you can sense the actual three-dimensional form. Um, and it's that ability to sort of sense the forms that will actually make your drawings more convincing. Good. So practice those. So we've got books, we've got cylinders, um, and then let's just try something a little bit more complex. Okay, so I've got a simplified still life here. Now I'm not going to draw it in great detail. I'll just show you the sorts of things you can do that. I'm going to draw it in blue. So this is a sort of technique illustrators use. So um, the idea with blue is um, illustrators would draw with blue pencil and then there was a way that you could, let's just say, um, let's take an imaginary blue. Okay, so let's draw a sort of face. So you would draw a face with blue. It's like it's a cartoon face. So 
So you draw it with blue, that's your construction. Then you would do another layer. In some case, you would actually do it on another bit of paper. And um, you would go on over the top. And then you would do something a lot more like a contour drawing, okay? And you would draw a much more detailed drawing of these simplified features. So that would be like, you know, the first blue line is like your gesture drawing and your construction drawing. Um, this stage is more like your observational line and it's much more, you know, you would put more detail into it. Okay, I'm not quite sure what sort of figure this is. Okay, and then what in illustration, in sort of animation, they could sort of then photograph it and they could um, treat it in such a way that it would take the blue line out. Okay, so the blue would act as your construction layer. So I'm going to do that here. And just show you the sort of thing. So, so we've got the sphere of the head. Okay. Now, when I was talking about getting an orange, the idea there is, is that that cross, you can then determine the center of the form. Okay. So in this case, the center line comes down and round this sphere. And then that acts a bit like the middle of the face. So instead of it being a sphere, it's more like, a, well, it's more like an egg shape. That's probably a name for that. So there's an egg shape. And then we can even put another wrapping line that would perhaps give us the eyes, nose, mouth, okay? But say this is all construction, so we're not getting into detail. Then there's like a cylinder for the neck. Again, wrapping lines would give us the feeling of that cylinder. Okay, so that would be like the construction. Okay, so that's the uh, the wonders of technology is I can pick that up and move just to give myself a little bit more space to do these other forms. So we can obviously see the pine cone uh, is interesting. It could be thought of simply, oh, it could be thought of as a sphere. Something like that. And then it's got those shapes around it. You could sort of conceive of it like that, or um, you could think of it almost like, let's see. It's almost like these are planes. It's almost like a sort of cube-like shape. Um, this would be sort of shadow, be shadow. Okay, they're sort of planes, but I think the one that obviously suggests itself most obviously is a sphere. So. line comes around like that, following the direction of those that line cone. Okay, with the middle there, pointing in that direction. So that would be that. And then the banana. So the banana is like a cylinder. So First of all, I would draw the gestural line, like so. Okay, then we've got one end there, one end there. And then we could sort of think of it as like a cylindrical object. Okay, and that would give us... Let's 
something like that. And if you look there, it also has almost like a cube-like structure. So it's almost like... It has like one place there. So, and then remember we talked about wrapping lines, so it'd be across that plane, down that plane, and then across that plane, okay? So you would imagine it as, a, again, like a three-dimensional form, like so, then with the stalk coming out. And like so, so this would be my, um, this would be like my construction phase. So again, I'll speed it up. I'm not going to try and do it 100% accurately, but I will do a little um, more like a contour drawing over the top to show you how you might use this, okay? Okay, so there we go. So that's a, um, you know, it's a fairly quick contour drawing on top of my construction drawing. So that's what I'd like you to practice. All of these exercises are great. Um, they complement the idea of daily practice really well. These are the sorts of things you might do with your daily practice. Um, so if you can get the hang of these forms, you know, go into your garden. You've probably got loads of plant pots sitting around, cube-like shapes, um, cylinders. And just get the hang of these forms and they'll come in really useful and uh, also just that sense of being able to create the illusion of space when i do this sort of drawing i like to think of it in terms of having um several gears so the first gear is this generalized mark making and then you draw the more detailed drawing on over the top now a lot of people when they start drawing they just go straight in with detail and there's no sense of construction now i have rushed this pine cone a bit but you can see how the, the contour lines, the feeling of it being a sphere has helped to some extent how I have put in these shapes. And next week when we get into shading, we'll also see how your conception of these three dimensional forms will help make you, you can use your shading and your cross hatching, um, for example, to again reinforce the feeling of um, three dimensional space, okay? So these are great skills to be working on. Anyway, I hope you find some of that useful and uh, I look forward to seeing what you uh, produce by the end of the week. Anyway, thanks very much and I'll see you again soon. Okay, bye.